At Option Genius, we believe that you deserve freedom, financial freedom, so that you have no more worries and more than enough money. Time freedom, so that you could do what you want, when you want to do it. And choice freedom, to live your life on your terms. But the system and Wall Street are, and Wall Street are rigged against us little guys. So how do we fight back? Well, my friend, that's what this podcast is all about. My name is Alan Sama, and this is the Option Genius Podcast. Greetings, Genius Nation. I hope you are having a wonderful day, as I am. Always being the optimist. <laughs> Welcome to this edition of the podcast. I'm happy to have you here. Today we're going to be talking about something that most traders don't like talking about. We're going to be talking about hedging. What is hedging? How to do it? Now nah, I'm not getting into all that. <laughs> that would be a that, that's actually that's funny because a few years ago I wrote a book about hedging, an entire book. Yes, um, hundreds of pages on just hedging and different ways to hedge. And how to hedge your portfolio. And actually, the book's name is called Protect Your Portfolio. And it's called Protect Your Portfolio. And it's all about hedging and protecting yourself from different ways of losing money and whatnot while we're investing. By the way, you can get the book at hedgingstrategies.org. That's hedgingstrategies.org. Hey, yeah, thank you for letting me do a shameless plug. Yes, you can buy the book there. It is available. So if you want to get the whole book, go there, of course. <laughs> so basically what I found was I was interested in the topic. I looked online, and there's really very, very, very little on it, I, I'm on hedging. There were some books that talked about hedging in a little bit, and there were some videos and stuff that you can, oh, you know what? If you want to protect your portfolio, you should buy a put, and that will protect your stock. Okay, that's great. But under what instance do I do it? You know, how many days to expiration? How many, well, what, what should I pay for it? You know, what percentage should I protect myself? All these different questions I had, thing out there. So I had to freaking write the whole book. It took a long time. I mean, it took, took well over a year. I had to hire a researcher to help me with it. I had to hire a writer to do it, to help me write it. It was a very time consuming process, a very tedious process. Because not only did I have to learn everything, you know, and I had to test it and see what's working, which ways work, which ways don't work, all of that stuff. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to, you know, I, I was learning it for myself, but then I decided I'm going to write a book about it, or maybe a course. And that way I can teach other people because I'm sure if I'm interested in this, then there are going to be millions of other people that also want no resources out there. That's, a, you know, like one place that you can go to and learn all this stuff, you know, all the different ways to hedge. And I found that, you know, in the book, there are like 36 different ways that you could hedge your investments. You know, most of, I mean, we're talking mostly about financial investments like stocks and options and stuff. Um, not just options, but financial as well. And so, there are 36 different ways in the book, I believe, used in different circumstances. And I found that there's like these four major things that you need to protect against. Okay? So one of them is another flash crash. I wonder if you remember the flash crash that we had, the major one that we happened, I forgot the date of it. But the major one that we happened, I forgot the date of it. But they never found out. It was called the fat finger crash by some people. But they never found out the reason for the crash. They never did. Nobody got in trouble for it. You know, they don't even know whose fat finger it was, if it was a fat finger, and that doesn't make any sense anyway. You know, one person with a pressed the wrong button and it made the, they go down 20% in one hour. It is, that's freaking insane. You know, there were, there were stocks that were trading at like five cents. Like a $50 stock goes to trade at five cents within an hour. That's insane. And then everything went back up again. It was nuts. The problem with that is that you don't hear about it as much, but they've had many, many more of them. It hasn't been like system-wide, but in many stocks, yes, they've had several flash crashes. And they did put some stuff in there like a circuit breaker and a this and that to protect it, but it's it's still not where it should be, where something like that can't happen anymore. And you don't even know why it happened. I mean, it's crazy. You need to protect against. A bear market, obviously, is something that you need to protect your investments against, you know. If you can, why, why not? If the markets go down 20%, why would you not protect yourself if you knew how to do it? Right? Not only could you like not lose that 20%, but maybe you could even make some money at the deal at the same time. 
The other thing, you need to protect yourself, another 9-11 type event. You know, it could be a terrorist event on U.S. soil, but it doesn't have to be. It could be like a hurricane. It could be an earthquake. Anything could happen. And why I call it the 9-11 event is because when that happened, the stock exchanges were closed for several days. That's it. Closed for several days. That's it. You could not trade. I mean, if you had money in the market and you needed to get it out, sorry, can't happen. But there was a massive attack on the United States, right? And so the stock market was closed because they were afraid because it happened in New York and people couldn't get to work and all that. Well, what if there's a hurricane that hits New York, right? They had the, well, what if there's a hurricane that hits New York, right? They had the tropical storm Sandy in New York. It didn't affect Manhattan, but you know, we recently just had Hurricane Harvey and Hurricane Irma. What if a storm of that size hits New York? Manhattan is right on the water, you know? Wall Street could be down. The stock market, the New York stock is flooded out. And if the market is closed for several days, what are you going to happen? What are you going to do? You know, because at 9-11, the, everybody knew the markets were going down. Everybody knew, but they couldn't do anything about it, except the smart people. The people that were in the know knew how to protect themselves, situation, and protect their portfolios. And that's something that I cover in the book. I'm not going to give it to you here. You're going to have to buy the book. But if the market is closed and the market is, is dropping, right? Everybody knew the markets were dropping. And when they did open up again, they were down several percentage points lower. Luckily, though, the market rebounded really bad. You know, market's down 20, 30, 40, 50%. And you couldn't do anything about it. And your stop losses are not going to help you. You know, that's not a good way to hedge. It helps in certain situations, but not this one. And so if you don't know what you're going to do, you're going to lose a lot of money, money that you spend your whole life saving, money that you spend your whole life saving and earning and trying to invest. It could go away like a blink of an eye, just like that, if you're not hedged. And then the other thing we need to hedge about is like unexpected news. So like let's say you're you're heavily involved in Facebook. You own a lot of Facebook shares, and then Zuckerberg, something happens to have a lot of Berkshire Hathaway shares, and then Warren Buffett dies. You know, I mean, he just turned, I don't know how, I think he turned 87 a couple of days ago. I mean, my God, right? <laughs> He's already lived longer than <laughs> most people. If he dies, that share, that stock price is going down. That's like a given. I don't know how long it's going to stay down. Depends on who the successor is and what happens and all that stuff. But most likely, they're going to have a, a decrease in share price. So you need to be prepared for that. If you're a shareholder, but that's just one instance, you know, what if the, what if the company you're heavily invested in has a, an SEC investigation? What if they're, you know, cooking their books like Enron and you don't know? Well, if you're on stock and you were hedged, you, you didn't have a problem. But the people who lost all their money were not hedged because they didn't know it. So that's why it's super, super, super important to know how to hedge yourself, right? But that's not the point of this podcast, this particular version of the podcast. I thought, that that particular thought, that that particular book that I'm writing on how to protect yourself was going to kick ass. I thought it was going to sell millions of copies. Remember, I'm an optimist, okay? So I thought it was going to sell a heck of a lot of copies, but it didn't. It's still, right now, to this day, I have not recouped the money on it with doing all the research and all the writing and all the time that it took. You know, as many copies as we've sold, we've sold a bunch of copies, but... We still haven't got our money back on this thing, and I can't understand why. And then I was like, wait a minute. Maybe that's why I couldn't find any other books on the topic. Maybe that's why I couldn't find any courses on the topic. I just don't care. And that's when it hit me, you know. Traders don't like to talk about hedging. They don't. I'm surprised. You know, I, I'm betting that this particular podcast is not going to get a lot of views or listens or downloads. I don't know how they, they judge if a podcast is popular or not, but this, if a podcast is popular or not, but this particular issue or this particular edition is probably not going to get a lot because I'm talking about hedging because people don't like to talk about it, which is crazy because that goes against all the scientific studies out there that show that people are more inclined to protect their money than to make more. More. That's crazy. You know, I mean, the psychologists, they call it loss aversion. Okay, and they define it as loss aversion refers to our tendency to strongly prefer avoiding losses over acquiring gains. 
This behavior is at work when we make choices that include both the possibility of a loss or a gain. Making investment decisions, we most often focus on the risk associated with the investment rather than the potential gains. Right? That's called loss aversion. I mean, some examples that you might be already familiar with, like, for example, when you don't sell a stock that is below the price that you paid strictly because you don't want to take a loss. That's called loss aversion. Make that gain tangible. Or selling a stock because it's greater than the price you paid just to lock in a profit. Right? You ever done that one where you, you know, oh, I made 10%, I'm getting out, I'm getting out, I made a little bit of money, I'm getting out before it goes back down. That's loss aversion. Or believing that you haven't lost any money until you haven't lost any money until you sell. That is another case of loss aversion. Oh yeah, it's just paper losses. They're not real. <laughs> just paper losses. <laughs> Keep telling yourself that. Or selling to avoid further losses when the reasoning for the investment says to buy more. Okay? That's like, you know, when, when your thesis of why you bought a stock is intact, but the, the share drops for some reason, you don't buy more. You don't double down. You get out. And we do that, right? Everybody does that. People sell at the bottom and they buy at the top because of loss aversion. We've all done these things. So then why do traders spend so little time on hedging? I mean, if so little time on hedging. I mean, if, if the psychologists are telling us that our brains are set up in such a way that, um, you know, we want to not have big losses, why don't traders learn more about hedging? Why don't they spend more time thinking about it? And what I think is that consciously, it's not fun, right? Most of us come from a mentality of lack, meaning we don't have enough. I, for one, grew up without a silver spoon in my mouth. You know, things were tough when I was little, so it was always like, hey, you know, can I have this? No, we can't afford it. Can I go here? No, we can't afford it. Got to work. That was where, that was my reality for a long time and that held me back because that mentality of lack, you know, oh my God, you know, if I have something, then somebody else is not going to have it. I have to take from somebody else to get it or, you know, I have to hoard what I have because I don't want to lose it, you know, lose it, you know, ooh, there's this thing, you know, that I really want to buy. Oh, I can't have it. I can't afford it. That's the mentality of lack, you know, so there was, there's the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And if you haven't read it, you need to. Go get yourself a copy and read it. In that book, he talks about people have this mentality of lack, but it's, it shouldn't be about, you know, hey, I want to buy this thing. Oh, man, I don't have the money for it. What his rich dad told him to do was instead of looking at it that way, he had two dads. Well, now he had one dad and then one, like, friend's dad that was the rich dad, and his dad was the poor dad. So if he would ask his poor dad, hey, dad, can I have this? His dad would say, no, son, we can't afford it. If he would ask the same thing to his rich dad, the rich dad would pose it in a different way. He would say, you know, son, right now you don't have the funds for it, but I want you to think about how you can afford it, right? It's a proactive It's a proactive thing. It's a different way of thinking. It's, oh, no, I don't have the money. Okay, done, end of, end of story. No, it's I don't have the money right now. But how can I get the money? How can I afford it? What do I have to do in order to get it? Whole different way of thinking, whole different mentality. So most of us world has grown up in this mentality of lack. Now I'm not, you know, trying to teach you how to get out of it. That you know, you can get all the self help books you want on that stuff. But if we're thinking that way, if we're thinking that we don't have enough, you know, then you're not going to worry about saving what you have. Right? So, hey, I don't have enough. I don't need to safeguard safeguard what I have. I need to make more. I need to make more right now. And that's the mentality that most traders have. So they're not worried about saving what little they have or even if a lot of they have. You know, if you have $50,000, that's a lot of money. You still need to protect it. You know, if you have $20,000, that's a lot of money. You still need to protect it. Even if you have $5,000, that's a lot of money probably, right? You need to protect it instead of worrying about, oh, how do I get from 5 to 10? But that is exactly what kills you as a trader, that mentality of lack. Because if you do not hedge, you lose. Pause so that you ponder this point. If you do not hedge, you lose. So as homework, homework, yes, I'm giving you homework. <laughs> the podcast that gives you homework. As homework, I would urge you to take a look at what you are doing to hedge your investments. Okay? 
If you're not doing anything, well, then <laughs> your homework is done. But if you are doing stuff, take a look at it, and then think about think about these these few questions, okay? Answer these questions, okay? What would happen if a bear market hits tomorrow? What's going to happen to your portfolio? What would you do about it? What would happen if inflation spikes? Well, right now, as I'm saying, inflation is really low, maybe 2%. What if it goes up to 10%? What's going to happen to your portfolio? What happens to your, your investments? Will you be okay? Because it's possible. A bear market is possible. Inflation is possible. Anything is possible. What would happen if the markets are closed again for weeks at a time? Or if there's a war? Or an earthquake? Or a hurricane? hurricane or some other natural disaster? What's going to happen to your investments? Are you protected? Be prepared before something bad happens. You don't have to go buy my book. If you do, that's great. You'll learn a lot. You don't have to. There are other ways to do it. You can learn. There are other ways to learn. You can ask a friend. But you have to. Okay? That's my point. That's my message. That's what I want you to realize. Remember to trade with the odds in your favor. I'm always in your corner. If you have any questions, help at optiongenius.com. Thank you. Do you want to get started living the Option Genius lifestyle today? Well, well then, head on over to OptionGenius.com and sign up for our free 9-lesson course on how to sell options.